Happy Friday, and thank you for spending the whole week with us here on the Rocketeer Minute, where each and every day, Monday through Friday, we go over one minute of the greatest adventure movie Walt Disney's ever made, the 1991 Joe Johnston-directed feature, The Rocketeer. I'm one of your hosts, Jim O'Kane of TVDads.com. And I'm Hal Bryan, an airplane nerd from the Experimental Aircraft Association here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And Jim, it's our pleasure to welcome back Craig Hosking, uh, aerial coordinator, uh, pilot, photographer, extraordinaire. So, Craig, welcome back. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you, guys. This is a fun, fun film. And this is absolutely this is one of our greatest minutes. I mean, I just love this is where it all starts. The you know the excitement of just before seeing the, the first Rocketeer, but we've got a, um, some aerial work coming up. Uh, poor Malcolm has has taken up uh, taken up the role of the uh, the clown act in in the standard as he's a uh, He's flying off in the distance. Um, beautifully. Now, Craig, were you, were you flying? This, were you you were behind the camera here. Who was flying the standard at the time? Uh, this scene, uh, Chuck Wentworth is flying the standard. He's um, highly experienced in these antique planes and has maintained a stable of them for an owner and investor for years. So Chuck's flying that airplane. Wow, just a uh, beautiful scene. And, and get, <laughs> you just it, it feels very unstable just watching him taking off down the end there, which I guess is a a learned skill to make it look look bad <laughs> right yeah having to fly sloppy i like to think that uh, anytime i do it it's uh, it's because i'm that good that I'm, you know, <laughs> me too. So, too yeah. yeah all right well as far as anybody knows then if you ever see me bounce a landing it's exactly what i was going for <laughs> it is the standard generally uh, i mean as, as is it a forgiving plane is it is it easy to fly hard to fly how, as as by no, planes go? I'll, no, all those little planes were were hard to fly. You know, the, a lot of them didn't even have brakes. Uh, you think about a, a tail dragger without brakes. That's how you steer them. Um, <clears throat> that's why a lot of them, uh, well, most of them had wooden skegs in the back because that would actually hopefully produce more drag than than any of the ground loop kind of tendencies of the airplane. And uh, so, no, those are tricky little. Uh, little old things to fly and you have to be careful in the wind uh, uh, compared to some of the more modern stuff and there is a real art to flying those planes it is it is a beautiful ship and this this particular standard has had been in other ones i think how you had talked about that earlier this this plane had been in other films yeah so the uh this wasn't the hero airplane but it was uh it was one of the standards used in the great waldo pepper um, it showed up on an episode of uh, the Indiana Jones Chronicles. Uh, it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good resume, and now it's uh, it's uh, it's with a museum group down in uh, down in Creve Corps. And in fact, uh, the uh, so the owner of the airplane, Al Stix, has uh, has listened to the show here and there and chimed in on Facebook. And we're we're hoping to talk to him at some point. Wow. Uh, later on in the minute, as we're watching, uh, we're, we're getting uh, you know a, a tail a tail's eye view of the standard. Is that being taken from a from a helicopter, Craig? Is that or... yes? Uh, that's uh, that's a helicopter with a camera system that I was flying. Now, when, when you're uh, when you're flying, do you have a are, are you flying with a monitor, or is someone is the camera operator giving you uh, giving you directions to go left, go right, or how does that usually work? Well, it's a real synergy between me and the and the cameraman. Generally, I have a monitor so I can see that what he's composing. Of course, a lot of it's air to air filming where we're in very close proximity, so you can't look at the monitor for more than a, a, just a second or two. You you look at it basically as a rear view mirror just to give you a quick view of. Of, of what's going on, but you certainly don't focus on it because there's so much other go- thing, uh, so many other things going on. Is there a? I would imagine that if you're following him with a helicopter, you're you're concerned about things like prop wash or, or overtaking him, or yeah, all those things. You have to manage your your rotor wash, keeping that off of the off of the airplane, and and then it's just really uh, quite close precision uh, formation flying. How, how far? You know, lo- looking at that. That scene around the uh, second fifty-three or so. How how far behind the plane are you at this time? I'm assuming you're using telephotos and stuff, but uh, no, we're we're right there. <laughs> I, I just went. To, I'm I'm looking at it as well, and and I'd say uh, I don't know if I play this back if it you hear it uh, through the audio, but I'm just looking at it again right now to look at it. But yeah, I'd say the in, in this sequence we had the camera on the nose of a helicopter. Yeah, I've just stopped right there a minute uh, uh, 56 or 51 of this clip. But, yeah, we had the nose mounted on it, uh, the camera mounted on the nose of the helicopter, and I'm probably about five feet behind his rudder there, maybe wow. maybe less. Def- definitely. Wow. wow. Right, right in there like it looks. Yeah. Gosh, that's just incredible. Now, in the uh, 
jumping ahead right after that, there's uh, there's one of uh, a few shots of uh, Malcolm in the clown paint in the cockpit of the standard. And my my best guess is that uh, you I don't know whether it was if it's the actor or a stunt person in the costume in the front cockpit. And then did you have Chuck Wentworth periodically just ducking down and flying from the rear cockpit or how did that work? Yep, that's exactly how we did it. Yep. Wow. wow. I could be an aerial coordinator. Listen to me. <laughs> you, you could be. <laughs> Jim, I quit. But, I've got a yeah. new job. Okay, well, well, we'll get you signed up. I, one of the things that amazes me, and I know we, we've we talked about how, how the creator, Dave Stevens, uh, gave a million notes on this movie. I mean, he, he had a certain vision, and Joe shared that vision. But one of the most amazing things to me is in second 54 – there is uh, the scene where you know the the, uh, the mineral oil is has hit the <laughs> exhaust pipes, um, mm-hmm. and uh, as you're seeing you're seeing a, a final quarter moon hanging in the sky in the morning, and this uh, this is supposed to be taking place on October fifteenth, nineteen thirty eight. That is the exact phase of the moon that was <laughs> due on October fifteenth, nineteen thirty eight. I know it's a little thing, but I just <laughs> If, wow, uh, that's a great piece of trivia. So, uh, wow. so, Craig, tell us how you orchestrated the orbit of the moon uh, <laughs> in order to get this shot exactly exactly right. Well, I, you got gesture for that kind of. <laughs> I guess so. I, seriously, when I look at your resume, look at your work, I I could almost believe it. You could come along here and tell me, well, we we uh, we sent some rockets up, uh, whatever we did, we moved the or- the orbit around. Uh, I hate to to do this to you, Craig, but I I've got to ask you a question about the minute after this one uh minute 41 since we won't uh, you won't be with us we've got uh we've got uh my buddy uh, dennis dunbar slated uh, for a couple of minutes here to talk about putting on an air show and things like that um so if, if you have a moment to just bring that one up in uh in minute 41 there's uh, it's the scene where Malcolm in the standard uh, sort of goes through the the formation of race airplanes, and there is one shot that I is driving me nuts. And I've got while well, we've got you, I've got to know how how we pulled this one off. And that is at let's see, it's right about second twelve, second thirteen. We're looking up at the standard from underneath as the airplanes break over the top, and then uh, the the Miss Los Angeles sort of comes between the camera and and the airplane and uh i I just i can't figure out how it's done because it looks like it looks like the standard might be it might be a mock-up and it's just suspended there but i i just don't know there was some stuff some points uh, and i'm just uh catching up with that minute myself right now sure and again sorry to to uh like this but no no problem i was just uh you know of course reviewing everything that we had here there were some scenes where the where that uh, plane hung from a crane, and I'm just trying to remember if those were were one of them or not. So I I need to review that minute again sure. to tell you what those uh, technicalities are. So that that's my best guess, just because it's yeah. uh, because it looks like the camera is just absolutely locked on the airplane, and I could, I can't figure out how you could do that, um, you know, without uh, without the airplane sort of being stationary, but it's obviously powered up because the the uh, the show smoke is streaming straight back just as it should but uh, it is a remarkable shot so I'll look, that, I'll look that up but while i do let me tell you of uh an interesting thing that happened in that sequence um is you see that you know we're in the the head on and again we're kind of jumping to tomorrow's uh uh minute you, you might notice how close that head on is as yep. uh, yes that was actually a surprise moment to everybody. <clears throat> One of our pilots in that sequence, uh, the standards going head on with the formation of boys and I'm flying a, the camera helicopter right behind the standard. Uh, and, uh, a pilot who to this day will continue to remain nameless was supposed to call break <laughs> for the head on. <laughs> and he didn't. And, uh, everybody's just kind of waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, he did not call break. And so the break you see is everybody, uh, re- in reality, uh, breaking into a, a safety, uh, uh, position. We all knew who's going where if there's a, if there was a safety problem. Of course, me and the standard are going straight ahead, uh, me and the jet ranger and, and Chuck and the standard and everybody else had their divert like you would have in any well planned maneuver. But whoever was supposed to call the break didn't. And uh, that's why it's pretty darn close. Wow. It was a pretty cool break. Wow. <laughs> there, was no, there was no take two on that. They didn't need them. <laughs> yeah. 
no, nope, that was it. Everybody wow. landed. We, we all had a so, moment. Among us. That must have been a, that would have been an interesting debrief. And, uh, <laughs> and then what? Yeah, well, at the inquest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was indeed. Everybody kind of wow. kind of dinged that guy, and uh, uh, but uh, yeah, that was that was an interesting and, and private moment. And I think there's uh, six pilots in the world, and now all of your listeners who are aware of it, <laughs> I don't want to tell them it's remained a pretty close secret. Yeah. I, I would imagine climbing climbing in on a day, knowing even knowing what you're what's expected, it's still it must still get your adrenaline going, and and there's always that constant worry of of flying these planes that are not you know I mean they were made some of them at the dawn of aviation, so there weren't exactly the the you didn't have many options when you're flying, and I would think that it's kind of scary just flying a lot of these uh, aircraft. Um, uh, Craig, you, you had a story about just trying to bring the GB back back to its home. That was uh, that was scary in itself, I think. Well, yeah. And on yesterday's show, we talked a little bit about the GB and that uh, Steve Hinton and I had had checked out. And uh, I did up most of the primary flying for the show, but there were some reshoots that came up a few weeks later. And of, of course, uh, Steve uh, was was ready to go by then and wanted to do them. So we put him in the GB for a couple of three days of filming. It's the it's the scene where he, he has uh, the uh, quote near miss with the billboard and, with the GB, and there was a, a couple of those things. And so Steve wanted to do them because that is such a unique and historic airplane. When we finished the, the, those reshoots, uh, I had flown actually. There was a, I think it was one. Uh, Steve had a Baron there. I'm not sure what who had got taken what up there. Steve had been flying the GB, and they wanted to return it to museum in Santa Monica. So I said, well, Steve, why don't, why don't you fly it down, and I'll take the Baron. And he goes, no, why don't you fly it down to, to Santa Monica, and I'll take the Baron. And we all knew that along the way we didn't like that plane uh, because it handled so poorly. But at that moment, it became very apparent because he and I weren't joking. We, we thought we were, and there's a lot of joking around. Oh, you, you fly it. No, you fly it. And when it got down to flying that airplane one single more time, both of us uh, declined to fly it, and uh, so we called the transportation department, and they came up and took the wings off and trucked it down to uh, the Santa Monica Museum. But that's how strongly we both felt about how that plane flew, is we did not want to fly it one single time more. That's amazing. I, I don't know that I've met, been fortunate so far, I've never met an airplane that, you know, that on some level I didn't want to fly again, but... Uh... I, maybe our uh, EAs, our Spirit of St. Louis replica, that uh, that's a wildly unstable and, and interesting airplane to fly. And I, you know, having having flown it once, I've kind of checked that off my list. But who knows? Mm-hmm. I, I, yep. wouldn't, I, w- I guess I wouldn't say no if the opportunity came around again. But yeah, and I think I'd feel the same about that airplane. I would fly it uh, given the opportunity. But I bet you I'd come away thinking, well, I'm not in a real big hurry to do that again. Because <laughs> probably similar planes, no forward visibility, and, and, and probably squirrely as can be. Yeah. So the spirit, of course, a lot slower. And uh, so it'll take you longer to get to the, the scene of the ground loop. <laughs> That's right. One one of the things that we looked at in an early – I'm sorry we're going on every minute but this minute. But uh, one of the earlier scenes uh, that I'm always fascinated by is the uh, – uh, the scene where the, the, the GB crashes into Wilmer's car, and I know that was done with a with a model that was hanging from a helicopter. Was that a one take situation? How 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 many times did you have to try that with uh, you know first losing the landing gear, and then uh, th- then the smash up with the uh, with the fuel truck? Um, that was done from a series of cranes as well. We had a mock up oh. uh, that this uh, that the uh, studio had built. And uh, they pulled the uh, mock-up down from one crane, uh, basically slid from one crane down to another and then uh, uh, into the ground. And then they pulled it across the ground a little bit. So, uh, and, and they, they basically, uh, and that uh, you, we talked yesterday's episode about little things you caught us on. There's, there's one, scene, one piece there that, that a lot of uh, those who have watched the movie will catch us on as far as getting the GB into the uh, fuel truck for the explosion. Oh. But yeah, that was that was a big slide down uh, uh, crane and then pull in once it was on its belly into the truck. I, I, there's there's a, one other scene. It's I mean, it's, a, it's a very minor scene when uh, when the GB first comes over the bean field and uh, the fellows in the rumble seat of the car shooting up at the at the GB. You get a you get Cliff Secord's eye view over the front of the 
of the GB, and I was thinking you can't really mount a, uh, a camera on that. So we were assuming that that's some kind of a model that may have been hooked on the front of your helicopter. Do you, do you recall how that shot was made? Sure. That we had a, a top half of the GB mock-up that was mounted to a frame that we mounted externally to the helicopter. The cameraman would lean out the door as if he were right over the shoulder of the pilot with this half, or not even half, a eighth of a piece of the top of a canopy. And uh, and we flew that to look like we were looking uh, right out of either the, the pilot's point of view or just right over his shoulder. I'll try and find, I've got a picture of that somewhere. I'll try and find it, get to you guys in post. But it was a really very, very unique uh it it, uh, it it was a it was a three second scene, but it sold the entire that that entire scene. That you're looking, you're, you're watching what's going on in the action below, and I just I, I would just imagine it's just it was originally just a frame on a storyboard, but coming up with that was was beautiful. It was and Craig, when you're shooting something like that, uh, so you're flying the uh, you're flying the helicopter. It, it's it's great how we're we're looking straight across the cowling of the GB, and I'm trying to remember. I'd have to go back and look at the minute if that's a uh, an oil pressure gauge that sticks up and out, but we're you're almost it's almost like you're using that as sort of a sight to line up on on the car to get the shot just right. Do you this? Forgive my ignorance. Do you have a monitor inside uh, the hot cockpit of the helicopter so you can actually see what the shot looks like, or or would you have it back then? Yeah, yeah, we definitely did. We have a a lot of mounts that would be on on just a nose mount looking straight ahead for a subjective POV kind of a of a of a view. I would have a mount for that. Uh, I mean a monitor for that. Uh, The scene you're talking about, yeah, there was also a remote monitor, so we could kind of get it all lined up. But you're more of a of a a techie file that I am because I can't remember (laughs) what gauge it was. (laughs) Well, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So at at that point, you're kind of like the the assistant director, you're calling the shots there, or does, does Joe, would Joe have had any input on that at the time? Was he in the helicopter with you or? I'm um, generally not. He would, uh, because of, of what all is going on in the aircraft, he would be on the ground. Uh, now today's technology will broadcast microwave video down. They can watch it in the moment, but in this case, film, uh, we would land, he would come over and review the monitor. Uh, I mean, re- review the playback in usually in my monitor. And then we talk about whether or not we got the shot he wanted. Wow. And again, since we're bouncing around, so for most of that opening sequence, except for the so sort of the billboard passes, that was you flying the GB. That's uh-huh. that's right. Yeah. So yeah, that I think, that, I, think that, I flew at twenty eight or thirty flights, something wow. like. Wow. Okay. So that uh, that low pass, the uh, you know sort of the watch this PV, and then you come down. A GB comes down the runway. I you, I think the wheels are less than a foot off the runway. That's you. Yeah, that was. That, that is amazing. Low, that was pretty low and fast. That was uh, that is uh, that's one of my just favorite sort of fly past scenes of all time. It's just you just tucked in so uh, so perfect. I envy that. Well, yeah. thank you. That was fun. And even uh, I mean, I know that you have no view when you're taxiing, and the, you're pretty much obscured when you're when you're flying down the the runway there uh, on level flight, aren't you? I mean, the, the GB offers very little view past the you can't see past the props pretty much for most of yeah that's that's correct it's pretty bad uh (laughs) so yeah for something like that you'll uh you know i had the grandstands on one field of view to the side and and uh and you know other visual cues that you pick up along the way you you do a a kind of an s turn down the course you're going to fly and and see what you can pick up to see but uh yeah it is a it is a challenge no doubt yeah i would think you'd be checking the barometer every (laughs) For ten minutes to make sure that altimeter is just right. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I keep looking at this at this film. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so distracting, and uh, and I'm sitting here, uh, you know, quietly worried, Jim. I I don't think the Granville brothers are going to be willing to sponsor uh, the the Rocketeer Minute. No, so I, I think we're, I think we're right, losing GV as a sponsor. Yeah. But, but that's okay, you know. It's it's journalistic yeah. integrity around here. Yeah, it's may, may, we, yeah, they make a they make a uh, a plane. Even stunt pilots are afraid to fly. <laughs> Yeah, but what they were trying to do, they did, and that was they married up. But they made a fast airplane, and oh, yes, yeah. they did. And they yeah. were built for for one reason, and that was just to just to go fast. Um, now again, Craig, as we've skipped around a, a little bit, but uh, you know, trying to trying to sorry, but exploit you while we have you in a, a few minutes after these segments, uh, and we talked about this a little bit off offline, or maybe touched on it in yesterday's episode. The uh, there's 
aerial stuff with the standard and uh, a stuntman in a rocketeer costume. And there's one shot in particular uh, where uh, the the rocketeer slides off the the fuselage of the standard and you know and falls uh, falls just right up off the the tail section there. Well, that was a rig. Was that carried under a helicopter? Or how did how was that one shot? Yeah, we basically built the back half of the standard, and we had a tearaway rudder, a portion of the rudder that was tearaway. And then after, you know, later in the sequence, the, the, we actually flew it with the, the minimal rudder. We'd taken a big chunk of the rudder off of the real plane, as well as this uh, uh, prop that we built. But they built basically on a stand that held the back half of the standard at about a 45 degree angle, mostly a steel structure that we just covered over and uh, hooked that to the bottom of a, of a, a Bell 204 helicopter. Took that up to altitude where the stuntman could safely make a skydive with a hidden rig inside uh, the backpack, the, in, inside the, uh, the rocket pack. Um, and uh, the stuntman climbs out of the helicopter gets down onto the the uh, the mock-up device, and then we film it, of course, with cameras that were mounted on the mock-up device as well as a, a camera helicopter that I was flying. Uh, he slides off, and he tears off the rudder and, and falls. And then uh, in the scene, he falls into the cloud. In reality, he just fell into clear air and, and then uh, deployed his hidden parachute. But, but, yeah, that was a huge rig that we built just for that one little tidbit of a scene. How yeah, high, that's such a short segment. How, how high would that be, like the altitude of a of a safe drop after that? Oh, generally those guys want to be two thousand feet at a at a minimum. You know, a lot of them jump a lot lower for a lot of other reasons. But in this kind of deal with a hidden rig and full wardrobe and and leather helmet that you can't see out of and all those kind of things, I think. And the stuntman on that was Mike Deluna. Uh, I guess I would guess we dropped Mike from probably five four or five thousand feet. Wow. So he had he had plenty of time to work with some some skydiving handicaps in the form of wardrobe and backpacks covering his parachute. Now, in that same uh, sequence, one more last little detail question about it. The uh, you've still got real, you know, what I think is real air show smoke coming past the, the tail of, of this rig. Now is, do you have a smoke generator somewhere on the front and is it just the forward speed of the helicopter that's doing that? Or do you have, because it's just it's going so straight and there's no hint of rotor wash that I can see. Um, yeah, that's just a pyrotechnic type of smoke that we were using on that rig, um, okay. and uh, rather than the, the normal uh, mineral oil smoke that we use on uh, regular air show or any kind of combust uh, combustion engine kind of smoke, sure. uh, this was pyrotechnic smoke. And yeah, we just had it mounted at the right place and we flew the right direction with the helicopter to make it look real. If you have any old pictures of this in your scrapbook, I would love to see. I would love to see a, a picture of this because it must have been quite a, an amazing rig to to set up. Uh, one of the things I'm always surprised at with this movie is there's no there's no behind the scenes or making of uh, featurette for the, for this film. And I would think there was anything being filmed while this was being filmed. Did anybody shoot any making of while while it was going on? Well, we knew guys like you would come along and do the making of a kid or two later. Yeah. Sorry, we're late, Craig. Yeah, yeah. Just we, you know, we've, we've had a lot of a lot on our plates, but 25 years on, here we are. Who'd you put up in the well, yeah, <laughs> this Mabel? Um, it late, late, like, uh, like. Th- by the way, this this minute has my favorite uh, explanation of anything in the movie where um where the rocketeer comes in and uh, he he said, what's uh, he hasn't been behind the stick in 25 years. Uh, what, what's he doing up there? And, and PV comes back with, he's trying to save your job cliff, but he, if he drifts into those race lanes, he's going to kill somebody. And it just, it lays it out for the audience who might not know that air shows are not exactly, it's not exactly the safest thing. If you're driving headlong into a bunch of guys that are traveling at top speed in an air race <laughs> and not yeah, expecting exactly. oncoming traffic. <laughs> Exactly. That is a yeah, a nice little bit of a uh, little bit of exposition there. You, there was a uh, speaking of the making of things there. Um, oh, I'm I'm suddenly drawing a blank on the name. On YouTube, you can find sort of a grainy video of an old VHS copy of uh, oh, it's not oh, excitement in the air. That was a short uh, sort of making of thing, but it's also Billy Campbell. Um, it actually ends up being kind of a nice little promo for different types of general aviation. Um, I'm assuming. Uh, Craig, you weren't around for any of that, or, or would you have been? Does that ring any bells? It, it doesn't. Not that I can recall, but okay. um, fortunately was, or unfortunately, there's so many uh, 
memories and shoots in my data bank of memories. I, sure. I can't tell uh, uh, every one of them. But, uh, uh, but yeah, was... basically in, in those days, they just didn't promote uh, behind the scenes like they do now. You know, they'll get as many uh, YouTube and online views of a behind the scenes for a movie as the actual movie itself gets. And so uh, that becomes a, a, a valuable tool now for both promoting the movie as well as additional revenue. There was there was a lot of uh, th- one of the other things that that would probably be a big limiting factor on this is you had to shoot match, matching day daylight sequences so you were mostly limited to like six eight o'clock in the morning I don't know what time of year this was shot at but uh, just trying to keep that morning light going uh, through it did yeah that's always an ex- extensive challenge for a director of photography uh, to to match light and. Uh, and uh yeah it is and they'll try and you know shoot the pretty airplane stuff when you're looking at the sky at a similar time of day and then they'll shoot the the day dialogue uh, where you're not seeing the sky so much throughout the day but it's challenging to fill the day uh entirely and still uh, have matching light yeah I, although i would imagine that if you're shooting upwards it doesn't really matter what type of you know if you're shooting at noon or or, or dawn it doesn't matter if if all you're getting is sky so, Correct. Straight up, straight down is no problem. It's when you look horizontal that you notice the shadow length and and uh, exactly you know the, the the things that we don't want to see that will give away our lighting. What is? I mean, this is like asking what's your favorite kid, but what, what is your favorite air <laughs> air air based movie? I mean, when you when you watch it, of do you have like a, at least a top three? Of, of when oh yeah, well def- definitely Rocketeer. You know yeah. how can you how can you not? And that's why it's fun to. To all these years later, still be talking about it. It was it was just uh, just epic. Another one that I did that was similar size and scope and dimension uh, is uh, Aviator, uh, Leo, Leo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese in in the Howard Hughes story. Uh, that also had some some huge big epic things of of this nature, and uh, and so that that was a, a ton of fun. And then uh, yesterday's minute, we talked about uh, Sky Fighters in France and. Uh, and that was a huge, huge one. Uh, let's see what else. Executive decision. We uh, going back a lot of years there, but had a bunch of F-14s and a 747. Oh yeah, yeah, that, a, a great, great film. Uh, you, you worked on 13 Days as well, right? Yes, huh? Yeah, that uh, one of my one of my favorite uh, films. Good, great vintage jet yes. aircraft and uh, U-2 mm-hmm. work. And it just uh, uh, that, that when that, that's one of my go-tos for watch, <laughs> watching sure. great air film. And it's funny, we just, uh, my wife and I watched that less than a week ago. That was for the first time in, in ages. And, and Jim, I think you and I had, had been talking about it or it came up in conversation that suddenly you had to grab it off the shelf and, and put that in. And, uh, Craig, apropos of absolutely, uh, absolutely nothing, um, uh, when I was talking to my wife about, uh, you know, about having you on, um, I mean, she shares my enthusiasm for most of these films, but, but uh, the one that made her the happiest was uh, the fact, at least according to IMDb, which we don't always trust, you played a part called Helicopter Pilot in uh, The American President, so which is one of her oh, all-time uh, favorites. Yeah. yeah so yeah, on that's... behalf of her, thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'll be helicopter pilot anytime they want me to. <laughs> I have to tell you, we, there is a podcast called Exploding Helicopters, and all it does is it follows the the movies that have helicopters that get hit with missiles. And oh, uh, it's, it's I'm in that a few dozen yeah. times. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, not again. Yes. As they say, it's all part of the show. Yeah, folks. that's, that's all right. Part of the show. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, Craig, th- thanks so much for being on the show. Hopefully, we can we can have you on. I know you're a very busy guy, uh, but uh, maybe we can have you on before before our show ends. Uh, but th- thanks for helping to make this movie one of well, I, I know it's I know it's Hal and mine's favorite, but I, I think it's a favorite for many folks. And, well, uh, thanks thanks to you guys for having me on. I'm glad we could match schedules. And uh, there's a there's a pretty strong rumor that there's another Rocketeer in the mix. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have explored that or not. Yeah, but, we're uh, we're we're hoping, and uh, as as we're pals with Billy Campbell, we're hoping that he'll he, he might have like you know the aged mentor uh, <laughs> scene in, in in somewhere in that movie. So hopefully, I I, I would love it. I I love that that guy and and uh, uh, and Jennifer as well was always right there. Just hard hard working people who really cared about the product. So. Uh, it'll be fun to get us all together for uh, for a reunion uh, and maybe make another one. 
Oh, I'd lo- love to see it. Yeah, I mean, this this movie has a lot of heart, and it shows in every frame of the of the show. But uh, again, and, uh, uh, I will quietly plead with you to uh, to keep us posted as discretion allows, Craig. <laughs> well, I will. There was a uh, I, I had a conversation just a few weeks ago, so uh, I think it's a ways away, but it's it's uh, it's definitely brewing. Very nice. This is good. This is good news and a great way to start the weekend here. Uh, Absolutely. But wow. Well, thanks. Well, uh, folks who have uh, want to participate in our conversation are always we're always available on. Uh, social media you can find us at a bunch of different places uh twitter at rocketeer minute you can find us on facebook uh facebook.com slash rocketeer minute find us at the big site rocketeer minute.com you can catch up on all the previous episodes please if you're going to uh subscribe to us go to itunes go to google play uh, search for rocketeer minute and uh, hit the subscribe button you'll get us delivered hot and fresh every morning uh, also please leave us a great review the more people read our great reviews the more people will tune in and find out about stuff like this and maybe disney will get some ideas about speeding up the uh, rocketeer sequel so we'll see if that happens uh but join us here next week as we continue the continuing uh saga of poor malcolm up in that uh <laughs> that, that standard uh, so we'll see you here next week on the rocketeer minute until next time over and out